Ah, what a nice day. Uh, oh. <laughs> what the heck? Okay, what is going on? Well, let's talk about that. Hey everyone, after much delay, welcome back to Diversity of Life. For episode 25, we're touching on another topic filled with controversy, but one that really shouldn't be. Climate change is a discipline of atmospheric science dealing with all things related to how weather and temperature patterns change over time. Typically, these are large-scale shifts in global climate over a large period of time. The Earth's climate changes, period. Hundreds of years before the debate over humans' influence on climate change, we knew that. The typical climate cycles of the planet have been documented via evidence of glaciation events and warming events. Over the past 650,000 years, we've gone through seven cycles of varying magnitude based on a general rhythmic scale. The last glaciation event ended 15,000 years ago, and we're currently on a warming cycle. This is where the controversy picks up. What is humans' role in this? If we know that the climate goes through these cycles, why is a warming climate a concern? Well, humans do have a role in this, a significant one. We know that burning fossil fuels releases carbon dioxide, which causes a greenhouse effect. This is when there's a reflection or entrapment of heat from the sun in the Earth's atmosphere. The burning of fossil fuels such as coal and oil is to run our factories, produce electricity, and run our cars. We use these commodities uh, very often. So you can imagine that we pump a lot of carbon dioxide into our atmosphere. In fact, from 1960 to 2007, we pumped 570 million tons of CO2 into the atmosphere. That's 10 times faster than previously in human existence. And there's more carbon dioxide in our atmosphere than in the past 800,000 years. We have recorded and measured time and time again that our actions are raising temperatures across the globe, of the ocean, melting polar ice caps, and changing our climate. This shouldn't be a debate. The controversy lies in what we should do about it and why it matters. Let's start with the why it matters. When presented with what I just said, a natural response might be, well, if we know that the climate is changing on a cycle, we must just be speeding that process up, so it'll correct itself eventually, right? That might not be true. If we throw a big enough wrench into the cogs of the whole cycle, it might destabilize it, and who knows what will happen. Climate prediction models try to help us understand the future, and while most are really heavy warnings, they are highly variable, and not giving us a clear picture. Even if the Earth was to correct itself eventually, we might not be there to enjoy it. Accelerating a warming climate has led to unstable and unpredictable severe weather patterns. These lead to natural disasters, human casualties, and economic loss. Speed it up enough, and uh, maybe we don't adapt fast enough to the damage we're doing. That's certainly been the case for other species. A key example of this is the polar bear. We are changing the climate fast enough to destabilize the tundra, altering seasonal patterns in their food webs, starving them, and melting their home. Research by my previous advisor Alex Smith dealt with the impact of a changing climate on mountains in the rainforest. These are areas where animals have such a restricted range that they may only be found in 100 meter stretches across the mountain. So, changes of 0.5 degrees per year might force them to migrate up the slope of the mountain to reach cooler temperatures. But what happens when they reach the top? Naturally, they go extinct, and we're already seeing this with some ant species. If our actions change the climate too quickly, many species will face this fate. And what happens if we get that point for us, and we're pushed off the top of the mountain? That leads us to the what. What can we do about it? As an individual, there's lots of little things. 
Use a bike, public transit, or your own two feet whenever you can. Buy more raw groceries, recycle, reduce your waste wherever you can. Make sure you turn off the lights on your way out of a room. The smallest of things and changes in behavior can translate to tons of carbon emissions. Be sure to check local political platforms and legislation, changes that will push business and industry to pay more attention to their carbon footprint. Even city planning initiatives like the reforestation, tree planting, and park recreation. Things like the White Painted Roads initiative in California are really interesting and impactful. They reduce city heat use and energy use. The climate is certainly already on a trajectory and will continue to change. There is no stopping climate change, but we as humans can reduce our impact and slow down the change to a pace where organisms have a fighting chance, including ourselves. The resources that we use that have caused this change are running out regardless. Why not strive for better for the sake of our planet? As always, I want to hear from you. I'm helping to teach a climate change biology course this semester, uh, hence the topic. Are there any other university topics that you'd like to hear about? What is your favorite time of year and climate? Thanks so much for watching. If you liked what you heard here, please hit the like button. If you want to see more, subscribe. And if you want to see more of my furry antics, follow me on Twitter. I've been so swamped lately, but I've been up to all kinds of cool stuff. I'm so happy to be back on Diversity of Life and have a lot of content planned. Stay tuned and I'll see you later.